Hello everybody, I welcome to another edition of Mixed Mowers. In today's episode, we're going to take a little look at this MTD Rotatilla Rotovator um, machine. It was given to me free of charge by one of Mrs. P's colleagues that works in the intensive care unit at a local hospital. Um, her and her partner um, have an allotment that, uh, that they've looked off for a little while. They used this machine last year, um, it's been sat up all winter and now it's failed to start. So they um, just got hold of Mrs. P and said, I hear um, Mick does um, repairs and bits and pieces. If he wants it, he can come and get it. So I um, thought I'd go along, pick it all up. It looks in good condition. It doesn't start. I have tried pulling it. It doesn't start, just doesn't want it. So um, there is fuel in the tank. Um, so I think the fuel is bad and uh, it's just been sat. So it could be carburetor clean. Hopefully it'll run. If it does, it'll be quids in. If this is the first time you're watching Mixed Mars, hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell and set your notifications to all. That way you'll be told that one I've done a video or two of on my Saturday night weekly live stream, which starts at 6 p.m. UK time. So without further ado, let's get down dirty. Let's check out this MTD Rototiller. Right, and here it is. It's got a six horsepower um, overhead valve HP Briggs and Stratton engine on the top. Um, it looks to be, do you know what, in relatively good shape. I've got to hit it with a jet wash yet and clean it all up, but a lot of it is just dirt and mud and grime. Um, I'm going to check the oil. Um, I have pulled the air filter out. The air filter is absolutely manic. I think I've thrown it straight out. Um, the air filter was no good. So I'm going to take the carburetor off of this machine uh, to begin with. As I say, there is fuel inside it. The air filter was particularly dirty, as you would expect. It's got a pre-filter in here as well. I got out nice and early today because I went to go to work and got cancelled halfway up. So I uh, wasn't expecting to get the day off, which is cool, but it gives me a bit of time now to actually work on this machine instead. A uh, couple of looks like could be 10 mils or even eights on there. Try an eight, yes, yeah, an eight. That was well on there. Now they said it was serviced uh, last year, so it has had a service on it. Uh, relatively recently, which is cool. I might have to drop it down a smidge. It is a little bit too high, really. I might do that in a tick. So I'm just conscious of these uh, linkages behind. We've got an air breather pipe behind the box, and then a, a carburetor setting, which should just pop up. I'm guessing, yeah, but the, the choke setting just pull, pulls off. I've not worked on one of these before. This is new to me. Uh, try and keep all the bits where I can and document where we all go as we go. Now, the carburetor itself looks to be in a relatively <laughs> rough shape. I'm going to choke the machine, uh, which is all the way that way. So that's not actually choking. Oh, I see it's a manual choke. Beg your pardon, yeah, talking talk, talk like a bit of a fall. It's a manual choke, that's right. Okay. So it's me that has to choke it. Um, I've got, I'm going to remove the throttle cable. For now, I think. Oh, I'm sure I'll get away if I put it up the top there. That'd be that's better. Okay, now we've got on here, we've got a fuel line, which I want to clamp off. That's my fuel line. And I've got a couple of star bits, torque bits, to undo the carburetor. So let's get a pair of forceps in, because there is fuel in this tank. But I uh, want to stop from coming off. I might have to get my big forcep, my big set of pinches on there, because, uh, these are not locking off like they used to. I have lost a set of forceps somewhere. I want to get the other, the other set of um, grips. Should be really fun. And just lock that off like so. So no fuel getting out. Oh. And a torqued bit, I've got a snap on one here. A snap on one might fit it. Yeah, it does. Nice and gently. I don't want to snap nothing off. 
that's been in there a while, that has. And it snaps off when we've had it in me. Feels like that's on there very tight indeed. Got to go a bit easy with this. Feels like it's got locked tight on it or something. It shouldn't be as tight as that. But it is coming. God, it's on there tight. Oh my word. That was on there well tight. I thought we might be out of luck then. Now I'm going to probably put this one in the ultrasonic cleaner because the carburetor is particularly particularly dirty. Got one down here to do. So much like a standard, that was looser, a standard uh, carburetor. Before I go any further, I want to take the fuel line off. So a little tiny clip here. We can remove, I'll slide that up with fuel hose, and then slowly, this is plastic to so go easy, remove the fuel line, bit of fuel coming out possibly, no fuel coming out. Okay. And then we'll continue to loosen the car roller off. This has got mud in here and everything, so the car roller's not a very happy chappy. We can slowly retract the carburetor out. There's a linkage to take care of with a spring on it. The spring is also attached to the top of the uh, carburetor housing. That's it, that's that removed. That's all going to be cleaned off. There's our carburetor, which is all good. Um, it's in good condition. The throttle arm itself is not actually running as well as I would like. It's, it's stiff and it should be a bit looser than that. Uh, so that's why it needs to go in the cleaner. So we've got that. I'm going to put a bit of paper into here. I'll get my air compressor off later, my air compressor going later on and we'll have a bit of a tidy up um, just to try and get rid of some of this stuff. I'll probably have to remove some of this cowling as well just to get inside to have a bit of a clear up as well because it, it, as I say it is particularly dirty all over the place. Bits of sticks and all sorts hanging everywhere. So let's get this carburetor right on the bench first. Uh, give that a clean, see what that looks like. I feel like I'm going to put it in the old cleaner anyway, because as I say, this, this frock leaf is not doing what it should be doing. So that, that's that's stiff, it's not it's not rotating, see? So let's get on with that, put it on the bench, and we'll see how we get on. Right, I've got it on the old bench here. Let's put a bit of light on the old situation. There's the old button for that gone. There it is somewhere there. There you go, a bit more light. And um, first one I want to do is give us a bit of a spray just to loosen some of the stuff on it. So it is going to go in the cleaner anyway. And that's not running there. I think it's the first time it's had a bit of a wash in a little while. Yeah, it's loosened up already. Not as well as it should. There's no spring on there. So it's manually, manually throttled, but it should run a bit better than that. Uh, would probably be about half inch. A gentle little tap, just to knock it into submission. There's a bowl. That's not too shabby. It does smell though. It's a bit of bit of what that's actually water. That's not petrol. Let me bring it up as a touch. Donna. Have you guys miss any of this? Yeah, that's actually water. That's not running like it does on for the petrol. See how it sits separately on top of the top of the petrol there? It's actually water then. And we've got a needle which is stuck in there. Let's get a pair of pliers on that. On the pin, that's actually stuck in there. I'll try and get hold of that. Oh, that not too bad. We'll take the uh Take the float out and the needle itself is absolutely crammed with stuff on there. Can you see that? Loads of stuff on there. And loads of gunk in here as well. So that isn't too shabby. Um, apart from that, all I'm going to do with this is just going to give us a little tiny clean through the main jets. There's a hole here that's blocked. Uh, this one here. Um, and that should be just about good enough. So a quick little clean where I can. 
to try and unblock this little puppy. It's not running very well at the moment, I can see that. A bit for the old needle seat. It's running through there, okay. It just needs a real good clean for the ultrasonic, I think. Just to get this little carburetor to run again. There's a jet right down the back here. There. Doesn't feel like it's running. Oh, it is a bit, I think. On there. Okay, so let me fire up my uh, ultrasonic cleaner. I'm gonna give this carburetor a bit of a bath. I should put my toothbrush on it as well, just to get, get most of this dirt off, just to give it a bit of a fighting chance. And then we'll uh, stick it in the ultrasonic cleaner and uh, we'll see what it comes out like when it's done. All right, I've got my cleaner. Got the cleaner out, got my solution. Now I just use a hot soapy water solution, that's all I use. Don't use any other chemicals at all. So the first one I'm doing is just gonna pour the solution into the bath of the old cleaner. And that gives me a little bit left over. Uh, that temperature will climb considerably. Put the lid on that, push that back. And then I've got a little bit of solution left just to put the carburetor in. Just because before I um, give us a, a proper clean in the carburetor, in, in the cleaner, just want to literally give this carburetor a bit of a bit of a birthday bath just to try and remove some of the uh, the built-in stuff. Now, people might say, well, you've got a cleaner there, that's what it's supposed to do, but if you just give the old cleaner a bit of a hand just to remove some of this other stubborn stuff beforehand, you'll get better results. So it is in a preparation as well. And literally all I'm going to do is just give it a bit of a clean to get rid of some of the... Uh, the harder stuff that's actually compacted in there. I'm not actually cleaning inside the car, but this is just cleaning just the outside surfaces. Okay. It just helps. So it doesn't look too bad already, but the, the ultrasonic cleaner will, will do it, will do its business. That gasket may come off if I'm lucky, but well, I don't have a spare for that, so I'm not going to give it too much physic. So with the carburetor now having a bit of a clean, I'll attach the float but put the float on backwards, okay? Just literally, let me bring that bucket out of the way so you guys see a bit more what's going on. Just put the float on back to front and just stick the pin back in. Okay, that's gonna be in there tight, long, long as it's on. And then that carburetor then can now go into the cleaner. We're well, about 70 degrees at the moment. I'm gonna get the float of the bowl, put the needle in, and that little tiny jet as well. But what I might do is I might just give that little tiny jet a bit of a clean before it goes in as well. Because that would be bunged. Uh, and that's it there. I've got the little fibre washer that goes on the bowl that can stay out. I'll put it on the top, I won't lose it. 73 degrees, I'm gonna go 20 minutes on this carburetor, 20 minutes each side, and I should then turn it over. Let me just check the orientation of it. It's sat right upright at the moment, which is cool. And then hit the button, and I'll come back to you. Let me make sure the heating is on, yeah. I'll come back to you in 20 minutes once that's all cooked up. Okay, whilst that's I'm going to be cleaning, you will be a bit of noise out the old background, but I'm going to remove the throttle um, cable off of this, if I can. Has that connected? A uh, little tiny S-bend on there. That's what will come up and then out, that's it. And then I want to remove um, the fuel tank and then cowling. So I'm gonna give this cowling a bit of a spray up so it's uh, a, bit, a bit nicer to look at, a bit more pleasing to the eye. So we should have um, on this machine an eight mil bolt here to remove and there'd be several around the machine one here um, you've got one of the cowling down here one over here be one up here somewhere no doubt and then this fuel tank should then remove off of the um, off of the actual machine itself 
So I've got my 8mm. So we've got one here. There's one round here. They're both the same size. There's one round the far side that I can feel. They're bigger, they're 10 mils on there. Two 10 mils around the back. I've got half inch in there. That's got a 10 mil one. There's quite a big bolt then. The two of them. That should be the tank to some description loose. Not fuel hose. I'm trying to take this cover off. That'll give me a bit more a bit more visibility. I've got two more here to remove, which are the same on the other side. Okay, and that should be the tank removed. So there's a the tank off. And this is why I wanted to get, get inside this machine, because you can see all of this stuff here, look, it's all cobwebs, bits and pieces. It wants to blow off with the machine. And then I want to remove uh, the cowling, which will be one down here, one right down the bottom here somewhere, there. One up in here. That's it, I'm not. So that's the first time I've worked on one, so bear with. Seems to be caught up here somewhere. Where it is coming. Yeah, it's coming. There you go. So that one wants a good clean up and what have you. I'll check the pull cord condition on that. That needs a spray. And the coil is absolutely covered and rusty and what have you. The flywood will rusty where it's just been sat up outside. So a bit of toilet paper in here, tissue in there, in that hole. I mean, a good blow off, a bit of a, a degrease and what have you, a bit of a clean up, and hopefully, uh, when you come back, this will be done and the pull cord cover will be sprayed up ready as well. Right, so a bit of a clean up. Now, the reason I want to clean it up is because this works very similar to a lawnmower, no different, okay? And when you um, operate this throttle control, this is flat out, and then this will be um, stop. Now, there's actually a kill switch here, which is exactly the same as it works on a lawnmower, no different. Um, so there's your switch, just a little marker switch. When it bridges a gap, it cuts the machine out. Okay, so that needs to work the same. That was a bit of a clean up, it's a bit dirty, not horrendous. Um, and there's your governor arm just there, uh, which is all nice and loose and on the springs as it should be, so that's working fine. So a bit of a clean up there, um, and then uh, we can sort that out. I've got a bit of a blow off, it's now just soaking with some cleaner on it, some degrees of cleaner, um, just to try and help it along. I'm gonna give you old sand, you know, the old flow a bit of the sand, to help with the air gap. I could remove a coil, just get a bit of the sand back, but uh, the machine has fired with some spray down the top of it. And then we'll go from there. So I'll get on now and spray the, um, the pull cord cover up. I'll get it masked up. Literally just gonna, where the stickers are, just gonna put some mask tape over the stickers, uh, just to protect it. And then I'm just gonna spray this up nice and black, get a bit of the sand down and uh, I'll come back. I might video that outside. I have now just topped the oil off 
Um, it wasn't too bad at all. Uh, it was just in between the um, minimum and maximum level. So I have literally just topped it off to where it needs to be. So that's good. I want to put a new spark plug in this little girl. And it's got a little tiny uh, overhead valve jobby in there. I got some of those come in just the other day, so I have got some spares for these. So let's give that any one of those. I've got the NGK version, and I've also got the Briggs and Strap version uh, in. So as it's a Briggs, I'll probably put a Briggs one in there. Not been running too bad at all, actually. This has got a Champion currently in there, and the Champion plug is a QC. 1-2-YC so I'm going to put in uh, let's put an NGK in actually I thought I had some Briggs one here which I don't uh, what we've got let's put a BPRS 5ES in that should be sufficient enough just want to double check the reach is the same it is. Yep. I'll just check the specification and uh, the gap setting for that. Right, that's all now set as it should be. The brand new plug going in, that will definitely help. And the roads to it, sir. Uh, Success. Let me find me my ratchet. At the moment, I've got quite a few projects on. Um, but I've got tools sort of everywhere at the moment, which is never a good thing. Not too tight with the spark plug, just do it up. <coughs> that now goes onto there. So that's now got a new plug in there. Must have been blown off. So happy with that. I can now start to put the tank back on once I've put my pull cord assembly on, so I don't want to scratch my pull cord assembly up until it's dry. So I'll come back once the pull cord assembly is dry, and we'll have a look at this carburetor. That's nearly done. That's only got another nine minutes, but uh, that'll be a couple of seconds for you guys. I've got that out now. As you can see, that carburetor is now so much cleaner. So much cleaner. Okay, not like new, but uh, that throttle now is now working better than what it was. As you can see, it now turns quite freely. So it's done its job. Um, there's a bowl. Let's get that out of the way. <clears throat> so next thing to do is to remove the float from the old uh, carburetor itself. I might have to back you guys out of touch. I think you're a little bit too close. Let's just back you out. Just a smidge. That's it. <clears throat> Let's put that down there. I don't want to introduce any new dirt into this carburetor. Got an air compressor line coming round you. I'm just going to compress this out now. <clears throat> Got a bit of grease on my gun when I was working on that machine yesterday. Don't like working with grease. It just gets everywhere. So I'm going to compress this now. So through that one there. And I've got one right at the back here if I can get to it. Let's try that. Through the main tube itself. There's two in there to do. Gently, gently through the fuel inlet. You don't want to pull the seat up. Get a little bit of a leakage through that. Through just there. Just a little bit. Back through the seat. That's good. I think we're nearly there. There's one hole in here. And one in there. And that's it. We're done. Now that one there, I can't get right to the back of that. So I might have to switch guns. I have got another air compressor gun somewhere. 
which has got a slightly longer needle to it. Now I need some more connections for these. Um, I need the narrow thread ones. Because <clears throat> uh, someone bought me a set and they have the old European ones, no good to me. So nice and gentle. This is quite a powerful gun, this one. Don't go too mad with that. As a tendency to blow needles, needle seats out. That's it. All right, so we're done there. Happy with that. And the main jet here. Oh, that's good. I might just run a file through that. Good. Okay, that's that cover and now fully cleaned and compressed. Um, I should now switch you guys around and we'll fit it to the machine. So that's that all now on. I can now bring in the tank and the pull cord assembly, put that back on. I don't think I can put the tank on just yet without the assembly on. One of that. In two exactly the same place on the other side. One there, turn that down a smidge. Right, that's a fuel tank on. I'm now going to hook up the fuel. I'm to go around there, onto there, power pliers. So this runs this machine. We are definitely onto a winner. Because it was free. Um, I've got a little tiny cover to put on. Again, don't know if I can put that on until I get the cowling on. I think the cowling's gonna have to go on first. I don't think I'm gonna get that to go on. to go about there so it goes there so that all sits on there yeah counting on first because it's got a bolt that goes up into there so let me get the counting in it should now be dry and we fit the cowling one there one there and one there right now that's all on i can now slide this cowling on and it's got a locating screws here, here, and round here. I'll give it a little bit of the old treatment with the old um, uh, pledge stuff, just to shine that up. Got that one there to do. <clears throat> Dropping bits. I don't want to see it in there. That one there, and there's one just around the far side. You just want to locate the bolt for that. It's under here somewhere. It won't have gone too far. But at the moment, I'm not locating it. Let me just find it. Okay, so confession time. I've lost a bolt. Um, but what I've done is I took one out of there and put it around the side so it actually holds it unsecure. I shall find it. It's on the bench here somewhere, and I might find it when I take the machine off the bench. But at the moment, can't see it. So we've got tank on. Got to do the carburetor's done. Got to bring the throttle control in and put that into position. That goes onto there. <coughs> so that's where this bolt is. Look, that's the spare bolt. Just found it. So that's cool. Thought I'd lost one. Thought it was going a bit crackers. Let's put that in there. Do me head in, it looks about a past 10 minutes trying to find that. So I want to set that to fast on the control, which is all the way there. And then set that to fast on the lever here. And then stick that in its keeping hole. And that should then be set. <coughs> Pardon me. Place. So now I can see that's now set to choke. 
Uh, the flap is nearly fully closed. So let's fully close it on the carburetor, which is going to be there. And then that can then, that table doesn't like to sit there. We'll sit back there. Uh, that there. So fully open, fully closed. Yeah, that's now set. Uh, new air filter, so I've got one of those just down here. Uh, brand new air filter. Got a pre-filter in it as well, which has been cleaned out. I'm just pull out how much weight is clean behind there. Which it's not. I'm going to air compress that off. chance new air filter goes in and as I say it's got a pre-filter as well it's just been blown out Stick that on. now what I'll do is I'll drop the table down I'll get the machine outside no big no small task in itself it's quite heavy and uh, I felt the petrol will get out there and then we'll have a little look to see if this little free rototiller will actually fire up. Right, let's put some juice in it. Let's see what we can't do. Got a bit of a fuel leak coming out from where I said earlier on. So it does need a new tap. It's only a drip though. So we should be alright. Okay. <laughs> Okay, that's the rotor vacuum now all up and running to about 90% of its capacity. Um, I might just put a new carburetor on it. It's got a fuel leak and um, it's, I will only run on a three quarter choke um, and choke. So it's not running on, on off, off the actual choke itself. So I may have a quick little look up, see what I can find with regards to a brand new carburetor for that and just fit it. Um, I got it for nothing. It's not gonna cost me a lot just to get a new carburetor for it and maybe up and running sweets and that. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Mixed Mowers. If you did, hit your subscribe button or whack the old bell. Set notifications to all. And don't forget any comments down below. Give it a big thumbs up. I look forward to seeing your next episode of Mixed Mowers very, very soon. But to people, don't forget, more importantly, take her easy.